Hey everybody, this is Steve, and welcome back to the Hideous Laughter Podcast. As always, just a few things to cover at the top before we can turn you loose on our first episode of Book 2 of Carrion Crown. We've got some huge news headed your way over the next couple weeks that I wish I could tell you about, but I'm just straight up not allowed to say. In the meantime, though, please make sure you rate and review us on iTunes, your favorite podcast listening app. Those reviews go such a long way, and the feedback you provide is, it just means so damn much to us. I'd also like to plug us on social media. At this point, you know how to find us, but just make sure you're tuned in with us there to get the latest, greatest, up-to-date news on the HLP. That's enough for me now. Stay tuned and enjoy episode 33, Just a Phase. like liquor and things that go boo then buckle up listener because this one's for you prepare yourself for the hideous laughter podcast hey everybody welcome back to the hideous laughter podcast episode 33 and we're heading to lepidstat baby can't wait Let's road trip. Road trip. And I think you all packed a roadie. <laughs> sure did, Griffin. <laughs> that is a punk IPA from Brewdog. Nice. Is nice. this a slurp or no slurp episode? Mm, I'll, I'll wait on the slurp. No slurp today. Okay. It's good stuff, though. Brewdog is uh, just came to Columbus. I love him to death. Absolutely delicious. But, and, oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. I just wanted to shout out that 33 is the uh, is the name of one of my favorite songs by the Ghost Inside. So I'm really excited for this episode. It's really special to me. All right. I'll make and sure, the, I'll the make sure is, you regret saying that. The Ghost Inside is my favorite band. <laughs> Brooks, what's your favorite drink? Uh, and by that, I mean what's in front of you right now. Well, my favorite roadie today is uh, Sailor Jerry and vanilla, oh, orange vanilla uh, Coke. Coke. It's um, it's very good. It's very good. The Discord talked me into it, and it's delicious. The Discord made me do it. <laughs> Discord made me do it. Hashtag. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> Only Steve can do this. <laughs> At least I put the hashtag before the words. <laughs> oh, is that how you Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> is that a tweet? Uh, in case you guys are wondering, uh, Brooks does not run the Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Huge Speaking surprise. People that do run the Twitter. Haley, what are you drinking? I am drinking a flannel mouth. A flannel mouth. What is that? It is a uh, cider from Blake's Hard Cider Company in Michigan. Neat. That sounds like a bunch of fabric in your mouth. <laughs> is it hairy? It is not hairy. And I'm very happy it's not. That would be odd. Listen, some people like a hairy brew. Interesting. Strange start speaking to of, this episode. Speaking of Harry Brew. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Emily, what you got there? <laughs> We're horrible people. This is a uh, raspberry lime, truly. Hmm. On a scale of one to really hairy, how hairy is that brew? <laughs> there are a few fluffs on my uh, can koozie, but there are no hairs in the drink. No tufts in the mouth? Nope. Just outside. Wow, Emily, why don't you just kind of spice it up a little bit? Everybody could use a little hair in their drink. Speaking of a little hair in your drink, I'm drinking a Smirnoff Seltzer. What flavor is that? That is berry lemonade, baby. Is that in your Uh, top four flavors? uh, That is my top one flavor. Ah. Nice. Oh, it's delicious. So, guys, we finished up a actually pretty pretty well done, kudos to you guys, role-playing session last session where you kind of tied up the loose ends in your basically two weeks you were tasked to stay in in raven grow with kendra kind of help her settle her affairs she asked you if she could come with you you said yes you guys are heading to ustala uh, you guys are in ustala (laughs) you're heading to lepidstat though lepidstat is about a hundred miles away i imagine it's the morning of your departure You guys are getting your affairs together to leave. How exactly are you guys doing this? Lyra wants to pull a Harrow card. 
Oh, for her hero <laughs> card of the day. Yes, she does. Okay. What you got? The foreign trader. That's appropriate. Appropriate. <laughs> and it's a book. Book is intelligence. Intelligence. Awesome. So one of them knowledge checks or something you want to roll? Because I make so many of those. Hey. But it'll, it'll help. It'll help. Plus two. You might be uh, half as good as Batube is at, the, at that point. That's right. Don't discount your abilities, Lyra. You got it. You could use that card to, to assist one of my rolls. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> so you guys are about to leave Ravengrow. Is there anything you wanted to do on your last day? How are you traveling to Lepidstat? Have any of your characters ever made this journey? Or even been to Lepidstat, period? Definitely not Eclipse. Uh, although, you know, when she was very young, she made a few long journeys. Most of the time that she did not leave, or, like, go much further than her small country home. So, nope. So, like, Ravengrow was an adventure for Eclipse? Absolutely. Gotcha. What about the rest of you? Uh, mine will be quick. That's just a no. That's just a hard no. I don't know if Matube stopped at all the great sites of uh, Usla before he headed to the funeral. He's got a lot of tourism to do. Ekmer? It's certainly possible that he's been to, I guess, about the area. I'm not quite sure if Ikmer has been all the way to Ustalov. He probably would remember that, seeing as how it's such a big city. But he would do his best to stay around Ustalov. Or, uh, excuse you're me. In, uh, you're in, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But he would probably do his best to uh, stick around his hometown as well. And so he probably wouldn't venture too far away. Okay. And it's a bigger city, so he may not have been to any of the big cities, really. That's right. That's right. And, I mean, merchants all the time go from small city to small city. So, I mean, that was his profession. So that makes sense that he wouldn't go too far. How about Lyra? She maybe would have traveled with Mikhail uh, to go on, like, a vacation or if he wasn't doing anything too dangerous to, like, tag along. Yeah, I imagine Lyra maybe would have met up with the professor there a time or two. She probably doesn't know much about the town, but she, I mean, you all know that he was a professor at the University of Lepidstadt, so you might have gone, like, when he wanted you guys to visit him instead of him visiting you kind of thing. So we'll say Lyra was maybe the only one that's ever been there. She doesn't really know much about it and probably doesn't know much about the journey from Ravengrow, particularly to Lepidstadt. That's so you guys true. are more than welcome to ask Ravengrow citizens. You've made friends with a lot of them at this point. Some of them are more learned and more adventurous than others and may have been to that city, may know kind of the the right path to take, the things that you might encounter on your way, that kind of thing. So if you'd like to ask somebody, I'm sure they can tell you. Ikmer would definitely want to go to uh, Father Father Zokar. Father Zokar? <laughs> Seeing as how it was a, a mistake the first time, he might actually start calling it, calling him that Father at the Zokar. bar. <laughs> and he My father know, in bruise. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But he... Ikmer knows the the uh, the weight of the situation that he was in, and um, he he certainly wants to see that he is protected ish. In, yeah, and I think in, in I think his, Ikmer's been way. pretty much going to the bar most days in this two week stretch. So I imagine in that time period, you know, Ikmer's sidled up to the bar and he might ask Zokar about traveling to Lepidstadt. Uh, uh, Mr. Zokar, uh, can I, well, first of all, M Father Zokar, maybe, I don't know. But, <laughs> That's very weird that you would call me Father Zokar, Ikmer. Well, you're, you're the bringer of, of drinks, right? And that is my, uh, holy potion at the moment. <laughs> do you call most bartenders, uh, Father? I, uh, I, in fact, do not. This is actually the, the first bar I've ever been to, and so... The fact that this uh, adamantine cup keeps getting filled up is uh, very nice. What what would you ask of me, Ikma? Well, first of all, here is a frying pan that we found in the in the prison. Oh, that looks like it's uh, very high quality, Ikma. 
It looks uh, almost like your tankard. That's, that's very true. I think that it would better suit you than any of us. I mean, Matumbe uses his book and Lyra's mace is pretty villa very nice. And then that axe that Eclipse has is very nice as well. And so I don't, I don't use the frying pan very well. Well, how kind of you, Ekmar. I, I wasn't expecting a, a gift. I, I thought you gave me that, uh, piece of trash potion holder the flask you gave me last time but this this is uh wow i can't believe you found something like this well it's uh it's just something that i want you to remember me by how sweet but i do have something to ask of you yes go on have you ever been to lebenstadt ah yes my boy i've been there several times what what purpose do you, what reason do you want to know about Lepidstadt? Well, uh, we're we're traveling there with with Kendra, and uh, you know what? I'm not I'm not quite sure what else we we want exactly to do there. What do you want to know about Lepidstadt? The town itself or the journey there? Um, I I, I guess being the uh, caravan. Escort that I I was. Let's start with that. How how best do I get get there and possibly back safely? Well, it is a very long journey, Igmar. It's about a uh, hundred miles, give or take, give or take. And you'd probably do best to have a cart, a carriage, or something. If you, if you plan on taking Kendra, because you know, I I know you are an adventuring type, but she not so much. I I, I guess that's true. I'm also not too too good around horses or stuff like that. So I I think riding in the carriage or at least maybe driving might be best. So well, what I can tell you is that you're you're going to want to take the mountain road. This is basically the most safe route there, but it will take you a little bit round the belt. You'll head through the southern foothills of the Tusk Mountains. Now, you cannot pass these mountains there. Very formidable. Very tall, very jagged. You'll pass these mountains, and you'll pass through the towns of Tamrivin and Courteau before you... Follow the lesser uh, Mortre River, and it'll take you up to Lepidstad itself. Okay, yeah, that, I mean that sounds good. You say so. We should take the mountain pass road, but we can't quite go over the mountain. It's a mountain road. It is not the mountain pass road. You will not pass through the mountains, but you will pass alongside them. Well, yeah, Zokar. I mean, I I can't go. I can't just walk through the. Through the mountains, silly. I knew you weren't a clever boy, Ikmer, but this is law even for you. <laughs> so he tells you what path you should take. He does recommend taking a horse and cart. I think he would warn you, though, that taking a horse and cart is likely to make you a bigger target on the road. It'll help you avoid fatigue and travel faster, but it's... And it'll give you some amenities, like you could potentially sleep in the cart, sleep off the ground. It'll help you get Kendra there, who probably isn't going to, you know, forced march her way to Lepidstadt. And it'll help you get her belongings, which, you know, I think upon him hearing that you're taking her there and he's a bartender, so he would know room around the town, is that she's selling her house. I think he would imagine that she's probably bringing some stuff. Oh, yeah. A absolutely. decent amount of stuff to kind of start yeah. over. At least w one cart. After you guys have this initial conversation, and I think Zokar has probably fed you a beer or two or three. You had this conversation. He's kind of doing his bartender duties, and I think he looks back at you and kind of thinks for a moment. And then he almost beckons to you to, like, slide down the bar to him. Igmar, have you... Ever heard of the beast 
of Lippenstedt. What? What? I I've never he- heard of that. What? What is that? It's from what I've heard, and I'm a bartender, so I'm privy to a lot of rumors. But it's this terrifying abomination. It's been terrorizing the people of Veland for years. Veland is, if you do not know, Ikmar, the basically the piece of Ustalav, the the county that Lipidstadt is in. Oh, I I did not know that. I figured you weren't a geography buff. Thank thank you. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm not very learned. You see, from what I have heard, within the last couple of days, Lipidstadt has been all up in a in a tizzy. They caught this beast, and he is standing trial. When you go there, it is going to be a madhouse. This trial will not be over by the time you're there. Be careful. It's a big city from what you're used to, and there will be people from out of town for this event. You must keep your wits about you in town. Keep your coin purse close. Will you do that for me, Ikbar? I... I... Thank you, thank you, Zokar. Th- thank you for the for the advice. I'll I'll keep my coin purse close. I I'm guessing that you mean that it, somebody might steal it. You put the A and B together, Ikmar. Good for you. Hey, you know the uh, the the sheriff has taught me that I I can uh, put one in one and one together to make three sometimes. <laughs> Okay, so Ikmer gets all of this information. We flash back to the morning of your departure. Are you getting a carriage or a, you well, know, a horse and cart? I think so. just before Does. just before we start, Ikmer would ask a couple more questions about the beast. Um, what do you think? Like, what did this beast look like, and like, what did he do exactly? He is this huge. He is twelve feet tall, maybe. This abomination of a man. He stands like a man, but he is no man. He lurks in the shadows of town and on the outskirts. And he, they they say he has killed a great many people over the years in in Lepidstadt. I have never seen him myself in my travels over there, but I imagine he is a sight to behold. Oh, so... So does that mean that, like, he he's just a, a really big man then, or, or is that what they say? They say he is more monster than man. I don't know what k- kind of monster he might be, but, I mean, a man does not stand 12 feet tall, and he's no giant. Well, we'll definitely have to, have to kind of figure it out. And Sounds good, Ikmar. Thank you. And so we flash back to the party the morning of. Are you guys taking a horse and cart, or are you going on foot? I think the call is probably the horse and cart, especially if Kendra's bringing a bunch of belongings. Absolutely. And does Kendra have a horse and cart, I guess, in her stable or, like, on her property? No, she would, I mean, she would be willing to pay because you're moving most of her stuff. So she would pay for one from, like, the local, one of the outskirts of raven grow the, the farms and stuff she would get a horse perfect a perfect i think uh, at least matumbe and lyra would and clips would probably do more of the uh, negotiating on what uh, what size and uh, i don't think there's much to do there's literally like one option oh <laughs> okay this town has like our, sm- our small town only has in. one cart yeah. dealership yeah one cart dealership <laughs> so zero percent apr you say just pay me the gold. <laughs> I'm interested in your leasing options. <laughs> so you guys get the cart. You know that the mountain road goes straight north. And then it kind of curves around as you pass the Tusk Mountains. And it goes kind of close to a couple other towns before you reach Lepidstadt. You embark on your journey... And the cart goes about 18 miles in a day. The first day, relatively uneventful. You guys travel probably 8 to 10 hours, set up a camp, 
sleep for the night? Any of you keeping guard? I have alarm. But, yeah. Uh, so over over when we started when we started leaving, I would have prepared alarm. Right. That's only good for four for four hours, but at least that'll cut down how much actual um, shifts we'll have to take or shorten our shifts okay. during the night. And at the same time, it, I mean, this is Vikmer's bread and butter. He would probably take the longest of shifts if uh, if no one else was uh, available. If we would like to set a like nightly trap, uh, I don't know, something valuable or something that would kind of key us in on whether or not someone would come closer to camp, uh, if that is like a fake sack of gold or like gold pieces or something, uh, she would cast Note of Blasting on that and just like, because she would think if someone's going to come up to the camp, they would pick up something small. How big is the radius on that? The person who touches it? Oh, really? It's not like a grenade where it would, like, explode? Right. The way you described so, it to me before, it sounded like it... No, 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 no. A, a radius. It would be like you would have to throw it at the person. Gotcha. Um, but it is something where if I did put it on, like, a piece of gold, it's literally permanent until discharged. Or okay. if I put it on something in- insignificant. So you leave a trap. You hope people don't slit your throat in the night. Ikma would definitely Ikma take whatever takes a guard shift. shift. Yeah. Matumbe casts alarm for four hours. I think between stopping the card and setting up camp and whatever, maybe Ikmer gets his regular night's rest. Everybody should get their regular night's rest, but Ikmer and the alarm probably can trade off four hours. Oh, yeah. I mean, setting up camp takes. I imagine Ikmer just goes hours. to sleep a little earlier than the yeah, rest of the people. So exactly. He's, not, he's sleeping he's during, like, the, during the setup and then yeah. during the breakdown. Or maybe yeah. even, like, in the cart on the road. Exactly, exactly. So you guys rest for the first night. This bodes well. Igmer, make a perception check. Okay. It's really bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's a seven. Total. Seven is enough. Oh, okay. To hear wolves howling in the distance, but they seem very far off. In okay. fact, you hear them near the beginning of your shift and I think that kind of makes you a little more wary and you're listening for them and if anyone could see Ikmer right now his ears are twitching kind of strangely he doesn't notice it he goes to bed and the stone of alarm happens it's set up by Matumbe And the alarm isn't triggered. So you guys embark again in the morning, following the same path. Now, the first day you had been seeing a decent amount of travelers coming from either direction. Today, there's still a decent amount, but it's a little less. You have basically made it 18 miles. Maybe you pick up the pace a little bit today. You know you want to get there. Ikmer, I think, at this point, would want to get there to be a part of these kind of crazy festivities that are happening. I think maybe he has a little bit of curiosity about what the beast is. Absolutely. And on top of that, I mean, he knows that he has six days of travel based on the rate that we're going. And so it makes sense that he would probably do his best to like help out around the camp, uh, set up, break down, just so that we can get off like 10, like half an hour, sure. minutes early. Yeah. So, and he cracks a beer. You see a little less people on the path today. It's starting to become a little far, a little sparse, a little more wooded. It's getting towards dusk. You think maybe you have a mile left in you before you set up camp and all of a sudden you see this band of it's like a caravan on the side of the road and you see the shapes of these odd people and they look to be maybe arguing with each other the caravan is brightly colored it's like covered wagons with just reds and blues and pinks It looks very showy. It looks pretty ornate. As you approach, you make out a sign. 
And the sign says, The Crooked Kin, Ustalov's greatest traveling cabinet of curiosities. Do you approach? It looks like we are approaching some sort of carnival. Make a perception check, you guys. 19 total. Nine. Oh, eight. 21 for Lyra. 18. Those above a 15 make a sense motive. 14 total. 19. Um, well, I got 19 on the die, and then I have a plus four, and then I also have a plus four bonus if it's under enchantment. So. So, no. But Lyra and Eclipse. So you all, while well, everyone but Ikmer sees this scene, it's like there, there's a couple really crazy looking people. They're arguing a little bit with each other. There are some crying. The two girls can tell that something's amiss. These people look like they're in trouble. Do you approach? I think these people could use our help. We should maybe go see if there's anything we can do for them. Yeah, oh. I oh. agree. There's a lot of uh, trouble here. Um, I can definitely, definitely sense that. Will this delay our travel to Lepidstadt? Well, they're coming the other way, so I I think they're traveling from Lepidstadt, wouldn't you think? And Nickmer is clearly turned around because her cart looks like it's facing the same direction as you. (laughs) Sorry to give you that detail. But they're like at the side of the path. And like I said, it's around dusk it might be around the time you guys would have set up camp anyway so you likely don't think you'd lose much time i think it'd be fun to check them out but i don't really want to get messed around in their drama i agree let's stop by and if if they are truly in trouble we can help out but we do need to keep moving this cannot be too much of a delay oh i i definitely agree but i i definitely think that uh Camping in numbers and, I guess, being in uh, in a larger group at night is a good way to go. So the first thing you see as you approach is a pair of... They look identical, these girls, and they, they appear to have a strange-shaped head. They're bawling. You can see that they're being consoled by this behemoth of a woman... Well, you're not sure at first until you hear her voice because she's got this silky beard that goes down to the middle of her waist. Oh, my dears. Oh, please calm down, please. I can't have you. I can't have you crying in this kind of time. We have to be strong for Poppy. We have to. And they're just... (laughs) And you see this little boy, and he's... He's kind of like curled up between the two sisters. You can tell he's a child, but he's covered in hair. This thick mat of brown hair. And he sees you approach and you just hear, oh, 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 as he howls at you. Beyond them, you can see this man, taller than Matumbe, broader than Matumbe and Ikmer side by side. And he's arguing with this man, and and I think Matumbe immediately recognizes that if he's not from the Mwangi, he looks to be of Mwangi's descent. The man is placed in a chair, and you can observe that he has no arms or legs. They appear to be arguing. Do you approach further? I think at this point, at least the four that you saw at first notice you, and they kind of tense up a little bit. They're worried. They don't They don't really know what to think of passersby. Lyra would approach the uh, two sisters that are crying and just walk up and say, we couldn't help but notice that you're in uh, maybe a little bit of trouble. Is there anything we can do to help? We always like to help a fellow traveler. And the the woman beside them would immediately rise up. And she's at least a head and maybe a head and part of her chest taller than Lyra. And she'd look at you and she'd say, Oh dear, we, 
We're in need of some help. Who are you? We're just some travelers. Uh, off to Leopardstadt. That's the way we're heading. But we lost one of ours. And as you guys are having this conversation, the door of the furthest back covered wagon bursts open. And you all are alarmed at the noise, kind of turn around as the door bangs on his hinges. And you see this man, white, ghostly white, with this shock of white hair that reaches probably down below his waist. And he, his face is covered in grease paint. He's wearing this outfit that is, looks like if any of you have ever been to a circus, like a ringleader, and he's got this crushed velvet jacket that he's wearing, this red jacket, and then pink and white striped balloon pants, pantaloons. He's got a top hat on. Sexy. Well, what do we have here? Howdy, folks. My name is Captain. You can call me Cap. It's nice to meet you. My name's Lyra. Lyra. What a great name. Who are the rest of you? What What's your business here? My name is Matumbi. We are traveling to Leopardstadt. Uh, my, my, my name's Ikmer, and uh, I, I'm with them. And you? My name is Eclipse, but she would spend most of her time getting closer to the child. She's good with kids, clearly. I think Kendra would be, like, back <laughs> behind you guys, <laughs> kind of bringing kids. up the rear, and she'd be like, I, I'm Kendra. I'm with them. And he'd introduce himself. Well, most people call me Captain Caleb, but my name is Caleb Hess. It's grand to meet all of you. Make a sense motive. Oh, this is actually something that uh, Ekmer has a little bit of skill points in. 14 total. 21 for Eclipse. 8 for Lyra. 17. Ekmer and Eclipse can notice that the captain has been crying. Something's wrong. Although he presents himself cheerfully to you, you can tell that something's amiss. Captain, I can see you have emotions, not the ones that you're showing on your face. And you maybe see, like, a streak in his, like, grease paint. So what's happened? We lost one of our own this evening. Can't seem to find her. Oh, not death. Strange you would say that. You Uh, said lost. Well, no, she's gone missing. Ah. Oh, dear. Her name is Poppy, and normally I wouldn't worry about most of my compatriots here. They're professional carnies. We we keep a tight ship, but uh, Poppy, she she ain't all, all there. In the head, she she's one of the she, those twins you see over there. They're actually triplets. Poppy was the the third pinhead in our troop. Where where exactly did you see her go, or did you actually? I mean, what are the what are the uh, the circumstances of her of her leaving? Well, she wandered off, but she she'd been gone a couple of hours. We we tried to stop. Travelers like yourselves on the road, uh, we may be capable carnies, but we're not, we're not adventuring type. We, we're good at performing. I, I don't want to lose any more of my of mind to, to whatever's going on out there, but we're very worried. She'd been gone for four hours now, and look at us. We're, we're not the kind of people that travelers usually stop for. She was missing in in the woods four hours ago while you guys kept traveling, or did you... No, no. We noticed she was missing rather quickly. At least we believe. We stopped maybe ten minutes after somebody said they thought they saw her. So oh, I, well, okay. I would think that she is in the woods nearby. That's why we stopped, but we haven't seen her since. Oh. Hold on just a minute. Let me let me just kind of check the area and make sure uh did you do you know where, where which way she went? 
Not we rightly don't. I don't. You could ask around the group. No one's told anything to me. But far as I know, maybe east. Uh, can Ikmar do a survival check? He may. Is he kind of doing like a perimeter? Yeah, yeah. Just uh, walk around the perimeter, seeing if any like tracks or sure. like broken branches. Can Matumbe pull Ikmar aside for a second? Oh, sh- um, yeah. He'd probably do that. Ikmar, this man and his troop are fools. Professionally, they lost one of their own. We have somewhere to be. Our job is to get Kendra to Lepidstadt, not search the countryside for fools. We can look around. We were going to stop anyway. But don't let this consume too much of our time. Oh, M- Matumba, do you, do you think that they're they're trying to uh, uh, pull a like pull a trick on us? I have no idea. Perhaps someone truly is lost. But we have somewhere we need to be. You know, that's uh, that's that's very true. And I, gu- I guess it was just the detective and the the escort and me to 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 spring to help. You know, do do you want me to keep going on and trying to find out uh, where this triplet is? Take a look around. If you can find her easily, find her. If not, we should leave. Captain Caleb's pretty perceptive. He would see you guys kind of conferring. Look, I'm I'm begging you over here. I need to find Poppy. We we need to get to Leopardstadt. Listen, I have this. And he pulls out this very ornate dagger. It's my prized possession, but... If you can get one of my family back, I'd be more than happy to give it to you. Uh, Ikmer would do a survival check now. Total 15. 10 on the die. 15 is enough. Once you start straying from the path, which obviously has carriage marks and foot marks and everything, you see a pretty distinct trail of footprints and, and kind of vegetation that's been like snap twigs and that kind of stuff heading into the woods you can certainly follow it Ikmer is not gonna quite follow it just yet he's gonna tell his party first he wants to stick to his own first okay this poor girl is lost we should definitely follow the trail and try to find her if it was one of us that was missing, we would want other strangers to help us if we needed it. We can follow, but do we leave Kendra and all her belongings in this cut with these strangers? Don't worry, I have a plan for that. Uh, okay, uh, what, what is this plan? So, I'm gonna give the gold coin to someone there. It's permanent until discharge. I tell them, there are consequences if you hurt Kendra, if we find out. It can be discharged anywhere. I have a, I have a backup plan. How would you find out if, if you're I, in if the woods? I'm more thinking we come back and anything has happened to her. We would see some sort of yeah. yeah if distress. anything if anything comes back and anything has happened to, if like we come back anything's happened to her that's it. Okay. Eclipse is gonna set that off. I think if you're saying this to Cap. No, we were aside. This okay. was group talk. I thought you were going to like, you know, here's the deal. Nope. I was just going to generally say, we are the adventurers here, us four. Uh, Kendra over here is a friend. If anything happens to her, you will be in trouble. Is that clear? Oh, that's clear, ma'am. In fact, I think she'll have a great time hanging out with, I mean, she's basically got a sideshow attraction. We'll make sure she has a good time. We'll make sure she's unharmed when you get back. If you're thinking of going. Her and her belongings are off limits. Oh yes, cross my heart. Unless you want to have this discussion with the Lady of Graves. Intimidate check. Go for it. (laughs) That's a four on the die. That's a 17. I really wanted to do a sense motive even before that. You guys have done, like, six of them. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you haven't, okay. You haven't thought of anything amiss other than the fact that, like, he's cle- he and the people in the camp are clearly distressed. 
Okay. Right. Okay. I don't think we actually have anything to fear. I'm more like Kendra is basically helpless. That's the yes, only thing that's, I'm thinking that's of. Exactly. All right, we go. Yeah, I'm uh, last la- like right before we leave. Right, that's where I'm going to flick the gold coin at the little werewolf boy and walk on the way. Oh my god! Whoa! Dear god. He's gonna catch it. He will have it. It's not like I'm not trying to be like I'm gonna blow up the kid. I'm just saying. Yeah, he catches it in his it. mouth. Well, good thing uh, Eclipse moved to chaotic evil. <laughs> it does uh, go off. She hadn't already. She's already there. Let's let's move past this. Yes, let's do that. So you guys are following the trail. We are. The tracks, being only a couple hours old, are pretty fresh. With that 15, you managed to follow them about a half a mile into the woods. But then it kind of changes. The terrain changes. It becomes muddier and then kind of boggier. And you can still see there are these big trees, and it's still kind of like a forest, but now it's almost marsh-like. There's, there's tangled growth and deep mud. As you kind of trek through. Is it easier to percept her tracks now? or If anything, it is actually becoming more difficult. Once you wade into this marsh, the water, there's actually water. So I need you to make me another survival check at this point. Okay. And I'm sure that Ikmer would at least uh, point out if anyone else had a survival check that this might be the direction and he would accept help. Yes, hear me. Let me take a look at that. Yeah. Uh, Matumbe is very eager to do this because the Inquisitor has track plus two. But I never <laughs> get to use. Lyra cast guidance on Ikmer. I aid. Ikmer has an 18 on the die. Oh, wow. So that means plus five, which is 22, plus two, 24, you said 18 on the die. I gave you yes. two. That's 20. Oh, plus you five gave me two. is 25. Okay, 25. Right. And then plus one from Guidance is plus 26. Plus one from Guidance, 26. I had a 19 total. Ikmer is able to follow the track through the knee-deep water. And he follows it, and you follow it for maybe another quarter mile before the water starts to recede a bit. And it becomes easier going, and then the trees you can see up ahead part, and you follow the trail to this clearing. Everybody make a perception check. 18 off the die, that is a 24. 14 for Ikmer. Also 18 off the die, but a 25. Six. Oh. (laughs) You are all able to hear... What sounds like a girl screaming. It sounds like it's coming from the north. Those above a 20 realize that something's off with the scream. You think about it for a second. It doesn't sound human. What do you do? Is there some sort of knowledge check that I can, uh, that, like, animal? Is that that, what this is? Nature. Knowledge planes. Hell yeah. That just means that it's that much worse, in my oh, mind. Shit. 17 off the die, that is a 25. Yeah, you win. <laughs> it's fine. 25, you don't know from the cry. I think you'd have to see it. But you know that there are certain creatures that maybe attempt to mimic other things to, to track their prey. Matumbe puts, out, puts his hand on, his, on the party's shoulders in a, in a very quiet voice. Says, Team. I, I do not think that is the screaming of a young girl. Furthermore, I do not think that is the scream of the young girl that was that either escaped or was taken from that carnival. I think this is some sort of being. What being? I do not know. But I would be very careful in approaching. Do you think that that was the like the tracks? Are we are we on the right path or? Or, or should we just kind of break off? You, know? you see that the, pa- the tracks continue in the direction that you're headed to the north. We may be following this girl's tracks, but I believe this girl's tracks 
end at a grisly place. Has anyone else seen other tracks that, that say, intersect with that? You can make another survival check. Eleven. Seventeen on the die for Ikmer and making it uh, twenty-two. Matumbe also has a twenty-two. Okay. With the twenty-twos, it's going to cause you to, you know, kind of cover some ground. But tell me which direction you're going. And are the people making survival checks splitting up or are they staying together? Hell no. This is, I'm wading through water still, right? No, you guys are on, you guys are in like a clearing clearing in the woods and the, no, the marsh has kind of receded. Gotcha. Yeah. I still probably wouldn't split up. Yeah. I don't think we'd split up either. Yeah. Lyra wants to stay with the party. Okay. So which direction are you heading? Ikmer and the rest of the party would probably continue north, um, with the tracks and be, uh, I guess, vigilant of anything that comes about. Okay. So you make it to about the middle of the map before you see, and they almost look fresher, these tracks that appear to come out of nowhere. You think there's no trees here. It's a clearing. How could these tracks just appear? And they look like they're following the tracks of the girl. Further... They are not footprints, but almost gashes like pinpricks in the ground, but bigger. And now, Matumbe, with that knowledge planes, you don't know much about it yet, but I think you know that a creature that matches this description, a creature that can start tracks in the middle of nowhere, a creature that's tracks would be like pricks in the ground, a creature that can mimic voices, Sounds a lot to you like a phase spider. Oh dear. I think I know what we are following. Oh it, fuck. It's a creature known as a, as a phase spider. And I need everybody at this point to roll for initiative. Yeah. How dark is it outside? It is dark. You are in the woods. So Aaron L is out. Ah. Ikmer. Ikmer did not do... Oh! Well, welcome to the club. I'm at six. So, we're in the club of of bad initiative. Matumbe? My initiative comes out to a ten total. Lyra? Thirteen. All right. In the surprise round, behind Eclipse and Lyra, you see this large spider... If you would please place it on the map. Oh, man. Number one, it looks awful. Did uh, Krusty Kress make this? Yes, our good friend of the podcast, Chris, printed me this. That mini is disgusting looking. Terrifying. In the surprise round, it appears out of nowhere and attacks at Lyra. Does a 25 hit? Yes, definitely. It's going to do a little damage. 17 points of damage. Ouch. And I need you to make me a fortitude save. Is that poison? Against poison. (laughs) Oh, God. I rolled a one, so that's a five. Oh, no. (laughs) So bad. You take two points of constitution damage. And you are going to still be affected by this poison every round. Now, you may make another save on your next turn. Just trying to help a carny girl, <laughs> and I get poisoned. Ugh. Now, this is top oh, of the order. Yeah. Isn't, isn't that the classic story, though? Story of my life, right? Top of the order of the regular initiative with a whopping 13. It's Lyra again. Please make me that con save. You got Jesus. it. You got it. You got it. Or not con save, Ford save, rather. Yeah, and with that damage, it goes down. Yep. An 18 this time. Plus. That was with my bonus. Griffin's smiling like a jabroni. That saves. Oh! Yes. oh. <laughs> my heart Woo. was racing. His face said it failed. Lyra, what are you doing? Hilarious, by the way. Lyra is going to take a five foot. St- oh. Take a five-foot step 
diagonal and back. Is that okay? Yep, go for okay. it. So the spider is no longer threatening her. I guess we should probably say that the spider is a large creature. Oh, yes. I said a large spider. Does oh, it have reach? Okay. <laughs> well, it didn't attack Lyra. Okay. I didn't even think about that. That was a good point. Um, and that definitely hurt a bit. So Lyra is going to cast Burst of Radiance. So she's going to target it so it doesn't hit our group. It'll just hit the, the spider. And it needs to make a reflex save. A reflex save, huh? Yes. Only a 15. That does not save. So uh, this spell flashes a brilliant flash of shimmering light, and uh, creatures in that area are blinded for 1d4 rounds uh, because it failed the reflex save. And if it's evil, it takes uh, 4d4 points of damage. Okay. Is it evil? Nope. Uh, Aw. <laughs> but it's still blinded. <laughs> it is. Okay. It is its turn, and it disappears. Oh, great. <gasps> Matumbe, you're up. Also, it is a spell-like ability, so it does not provoke. Um, do, can Matumbe roll another knowledge check to learn more about this creature? Yes, knowledge arcana. Oh, boy. Okay. That's a 15 off the die, so that's looking like a 23 total. 23, you get two questions. Oh, boy. I definitely want to know weaknesses and resistances. Okay. Well, I mean, from a player perspective... Has neither. I would say that it's a bug. Bug Bug-like. Bug-like. Hey, guys. This is not weak to anything, nor is it resistant to anything. It just exists. (laughs) Do not augment your tactics at all. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, thank... Thank you for your, uh, your, uh, I- I- insight. Astute Matumbe. discovery. Crushing it back here. Yeah. All right. So, um, Matumbe is going to lay, he's, he's standing right behind Eclipse, and he's going to lay his hand on his shoulder. Um, and he's going to say, though you may not revere her, the lady watches over us all, and casts divine favor on Eclipse, granting her a plus one to... Um, her attack roll and weapon damage rolls and says if the beast appears slay it nice all right eclipse you are up well that's gonna last a full minute so don't worry about that expiring awesome i was just uh looking it up to make sure there you go uh so i would like to go ahead and uh ready in action and the minute that i can see the spider I am going to shoot off an energy ray. Okay. The minute. Man. No. The second. The second. (laughs) Within (laughs) ten rounds. (laughs) Ikmer, you're up. Also, uh, because the spider has apparently disappeared, he would do the exact same thing. Everyone right now is in, I guess, like L formation. And so uh, he would... um, he would just ready any uh, any sort of attack action at it when anyone else is in the area or when it attacks anything else in the area. Okay. Lyra, back to you. That first hit uh, really hurt, so Lyra's going to cast Cure Light Wounds on herself. Okay. Lyra casts Cure Light Wounds. 11 points of healing. Nice. Yay. Nice. The spider ticks down its blindness ticker. Rolled a two, so that wasn't plus anything, was it? No, it was not. Yep, 1d4. Okay. And it moves somewhere. Matumbe, I imagine you probably, unless you're buffing, ready? Um, Matumbe's buffing. He is going to... He'll ready in action. He'll ready in action to attack if it appears next to him in one of his uh, threatening squares. Okay. Eclipse, you still don't see it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I think my smartest move will to be go ahead and I'll, I guess, uh, swift action, maybe mind barrier. 
Okay. I don't know. No, actually, I just don't. I don't think that's worth it. I'll, I'll just keep my ready deduction. It's a thir- full thirty feet away for my energy ray. If I see it, I'm gonna uh, move closer if I need to, and then use an energy. Ray. Otherwise, so I- are you holding your action, or uh-huh. are you because you can ready an energy ray, or you can hold your action till the spider appears, take your action and move and do something. You can only do a standard with a readied. Yeah, yeah, I'll ready one then. Okay. Ikmer? Ikmer is going to uh, further track the, I guess, girl's uh, footsteps okay. through the through the swamp. Mm-hmm. With a survival check. And unfortunately, it only ends up being a nine. He can't really tell, although he assumes that it continues the way that he saw the tracks going. Lyra, you're up once again. Since it's not really appearing, she's not going to start singing or anything, but she will uh, turn to Ikmer because he's right there, uh, right next to her, and she's going to cast guidance on him, saying, May the currents of the sea of life lead you to the spider. And the spider appears in the squares in front of Matumbe, no longer blind. So I get to cast my energy ray. So Eclipse casts her energy ray, not there, off. One more. He's catty corner to Matumbe. So Eclipse gets her energy ray, and Matumbe gets his ready to action. Yes, sir. Okay, so I have um, 20 to touch AC. That will hit. Awesome. I'm going to do 2d6. Okay. Uh, that is seven points of damage total. All right, Matume is going to whack at him with that book. Well, it popped out of my dice tray and rolled a four, so that goes up to a 13 total. Doesn't hit. Beautiful. And now it attacks Matumbe. Ah, 17 on the die will definitely hit Matumbe. Sounds like it, yeah. 17 more points of damage. Ouch. Make a con save, or a fortitude save. Holy shit. You, you said 17 points of damage. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Matumbe is in between um, Eclipse and Ikmer. So by having his shake it off, shake it off, uh, teamwork feat for being an Inquisitor, he does get a plus two to his fortitude save. 13 off the die, um, plus my base six, and an added plus two. That's a whole lot. Um, that's going to come up to a 21. That Thank saves. Goodness. Thank goodness. And the creature, with its move action, disappears. Son of a bitch. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Matumbe is up. All right. Um, that hurt Matumbe a lot. He is going to cast Shield of Faith on himself, buffing him with uh, a little bit of AC as... Uh, Purple energy flows across his body, across his shield, and across his book. Perfect. Does he move at all? Uh, no, he stays. Actually, he takes a five foot step. So now he has three allies adjacent to him. Sounds good. Eclipse? Okay, so I know this sounds real lame, but I'm gonna prepare a spell because now we're pretty, all, pretty much close together. If the creature comes within touching range, I will uh, cast the spell. So I'm going to ready my action to cast a spell if they come within touch. Okay. Ikmer. Ikmer is going to do the same thing that he did before and hold his action until he uh, until the creature is in range of his attack. And then uh, and not move at all. Okay. Alira. Alira is going to expect the spider to pop back in at some point, so she is going to start singing to give everyone a bonus. Awesome. Oh, yeah. she move at all? No, she's going to stay where she is. We're all pretty clumped up, and she's within touching distance to Matumbe, so she can heal him next round. Rock and roll. The spider appears in front of Ikmer and Lyra. Bites at Ikmer. All right. Does a 26 hit? You know what? Don't tell me. I know it does. <laughs> it's going to be 21 points of damage. Make a fortitude save. All right. 
19 on the die. With that saves. The, okay. The spider, though, had used his move action, so it is not going to disappear. Everybody that had a readied action against it, where it is within range, so I think that's Ikmer, can take their attack. Absolutely. Yeah, he probably should have done that before it even attacked him, but... Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Ten on the die, plus, uh, well, I will use a power attack this round. Am I able to do it? You're not supposed to do it yeah, before you roll. roll. Oh, all right. Well, then, not before I roll. It is a plus ten. So. Twenty. It is. Miss. Matumbe, you're up. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, is there a... Uh, can, can I keep rolling knowledge checks? Yep, or go ahead. Exhausted? Roll another. Uh, same religion? Uh, no. Arcana. Arcana. Oh, yeah. <laughs> duh. I totally forgot. All right. 13... Or no, 12. That's not going to do anything. It so, does not give you anything. So Matume is going to take a five-foot step up. Now he is within striking distance of the spider, and he's going to swing at it with that book. Okay. Yeah. Oh. 11 off the die, that goes up to a 21. That hits. Yes, I think I figured out the AC. <laughs> oh, no, I think I that. Oh, no. All right, I didn't quite make it into my dice tray, but that is in eight points of damage, bludgeoning total, and cold iron if it matters, off a plus one weapon. I'm assuming it does. Yeah, you draw the extra when I told you it had no weaknesses. <laughs> Eclipse, you're up. Matumbe very conveniently went exactly where I wanted to go, but... Mm. You can still move and attack. Yeah. I just, uh... Oh, yeah, and it doesn't have reach, so we're good there. I have only... Well... If I move all the way around, I should... You can make that in 20 feet. Yeah. It's, it's like, exact, exactly 5, 10, 15, 20. Yeah. So uh, I would be moving the full... So you full loop around Matumbe to avoid the AOO from going through Matumbe Square... Right. And then I am going to cast um, a, a, a melee touch attack spell. Okay. Okay, so it's a uh, 21 to touch. That hits. And this is going to be uh, 4d6 of electricity damage. Okay. Don't forget your plus one for divine favor. Fantastic. 17 points of damage. Okay. Ikmer, you're up. He's he's a bit torn between tracking the the girl or attacking the creature, but... How about you swing on the thing that's dealing 20 no, points no. of damage around? Ah. What you got, bud? 16. Misses. Yeah. Lyra, you're up. Lyra doesn't like to be within range of the spider, so she is going to... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that first hit really hurt. So she's going to move back five feet. Um, well, actually, yeah, yeah, just just back five feet. Um, and then she is going to cast Cure Light Wounds on Ikmer, who looks the most grievously wounded. And that's nine points of healing. Oh, why, thank you, my lady. The spider disappears. Son of a bitch. You know, hit your knowledge check. I got pretty high that first one. You got two questions. You I just know. asked shit questions. Not shit questions. Those are good questions. Yeah, those are good questions. You just weren't pertinent for this. Okay. Matumbe. I mean, my buffs are my buffs. They're pretty much what they are. Um, I, ready in action to swipe at the spider if he appears next to me. So with that, Eclipse is up. I am going to... Probably ready another uh, action. This time I will, uh, yeah, ready, ready a, a spell if it gets within touch range because I, I feel like that's it's going to be the most effective realistically. Okay. Oh, can I also make a knowledge check now? Yeah. Do you have knowledge, Arcana? Uh, I I do. I was looking at my sheet. <laughs> Fantastic. Nineteen. Nineteen gets you one question. What 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 uh, is it doing right now? So, <laughs> what is this special ability that it probably has? It's yep. the real question. It has this ability called Ethereal Jaunt. Cool. As a swift action, it can move from the Ethereal Plane to the Material Plane. As a move action, it can move from 
the material plane to the ethereal plane. With all of the benefits and perks that come from being in the ethereal plane, such as moving through objects or people, Mm -hmm. being able to move up or down, being invisible, those kind of awesome things. I don't yep. like that one bit. Some Welcome giant, to Phase Spiders. A, a giant spider that can phase through reality. Yes. I don't, and that's I why still, it is dope as shit. Still don't like that one bit. And you've actually seen it at this point. Like, you're fighting it, and you've seen it for long enough. It's yep. got this, like, grisly human face. Oh. This female face. And this, like, tattered hair coming down off of the face. Wait a minute. Does this twin... Uh, it, is it like the twins that we have seen? No. Okay. Well, that's good. So Eclipse is gone. Ikmer, what are you doing? He is going to ready an action if it comes within his range. Uh, and right now, everyone is, uh, I don't know, I guess. Circled around Ikmer, basically? A uh, little of. bit, yeah, a little bit. Everyone is within five foot of Ikmer. All right, Lyra. You got uh, view the ethereal plane as a spell? No, unfortunately, I don't have that. That's a shame. Yeah, so Lyra is going to take a step right behind Ikmer to kind of get more clumped up together, and she will continue singing. Spider is going to take a five-foot step from where it was because Lyra just moved. It is catty corner to Lyra. And it attacks at Lyra. So 19 hit? Yes. 21 points of damage. Ugh. Make a fortitude save. Are you... You okay? How, how bad? There. Are you well? <laughs> uh, no, I, Lyra only has 8 hit points left. That is a 21. Saves. Yes. Since it took a 5 foot step, it can no longer ethereally jaunt, because it can't take a move action. So it is there. I don't think any of you had a ready to attack to shoot something, but it's Matumbe's turn. Matumbe uh, needs to start putting some damage up on this thing, so he's going to run around Lyra and say, Get yourself to safety or heal yourself or do something. And Exactly, Brooks, thank you. And then take a swipe at this spider with the book. 19 off the die. That'll hit. All right, cool. Max damage, that's 12 points of damage. As he comes around and just bashes this lady spider in the face. Nice. Eclipse, you're up. Oh, oh, can do the same little thing. 5, 10, 15, 20, and make a melee touch attack. 16 on the die will definitely hit. Yep. Uh, so, another shocking grasp right on the spider. That's what I'm talking about. Only 14 this time. And you took into account your plus one divine fate? Yes. Okay, good. Just making sure. Yeah, I I rolled a little lower. (laughs) Ikmer. He is absolutely going to do the same and take a five foot foot step up and then five foot diagonal for his move action and then uh, attack. Four on the die means, yeah, he's definitely going to. Lyra, what you doing? Lyra will continue singing, and she is going to take a five-foot step diagonally away from the spider. Oh, and she would like to do... Can she do some sort of check to see if the spider is targeting her because she is singing? No, it's because she's alone. Oh. So you just put yourself alone. Hand off the pawn. Darn it. Plus, Lyra wouldn't necessarily know that. Yeah, that's true. She's actively trying to get away from the spider. Um... Okay. Uh, she would like to cast a spell, though. Since the spider is actually visible right now, uh, she is going to cast Sound Burst. So she's going to sing really, really loud, um, and it's going to take 1d8 points of sonic damage, and it must do a, will, a fortitude save Sorry, uh, to avoid being stunned. Nice. 24 on the fort. That definitely saves, but it does take five points of damage. Okay. It is its turn. It turns invisible. Matumbe. Okay. 
Is there another knowledge check I can roll? You can make one more knowledge arcana. Okay. That is the goofiest shit I've ever seen. I rolled into my dice box. The die popped, popped on up. the corner. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's it's like if you flip like flip a coin and it lands on the side. My die is balanced on on uh, on the side of my uh, my dice tray. All right, so I'm assuming that doesn't get me much. It's a 17 total. 17 will get you one question. Ooh, cool. Okay. Um, the meta gamer in me wants to know its tactics, so I know to help Lear, but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, shit, what should I ask? What should I ask? Is I there th- is is there a way to trap it on the material plane? Or at least prevent it from, from leaving? You would have to either restrain it or stun it or that kind of thing. Like, like if Lyra had gotten that stun off, it wouldn't have been able to make the move, obviously. Clearly, it's doing something that makes it blink out. Sure. Okay. Well, it's worth a shot. So, Matumbe is going to take a five-foot step and ready in action to swipe at the... Um, to swipe at the spider if it appears. Okay. Within his threat range. Eclipse. Okay. So, I am going to... I'm going to cast Note of Blasting on... I know I've got, like, marbles in my bag. Nope. Got a better idea. I'm going to cast it on uh, my t- small dagger. Okay. Ikmer. Based on where he's at, he's just going to ready in action and attack where the spider appears next. Sounds good. All right, Lyra's turn. All right, Lyra is going to take a five-foot step towards Matumbe. Okay. And she is really not feeling good after that last one, so she is going to cast Cure Light Wounds on herself again. Woo! 11 points of healing again. All right. The spider appears, and it takes a five-foot step again to be catty corner with Lyra because it moved up to her, and then she moved away from it again. So it was here. Then it went invisible and And took its second move action to move over to her in front of her. So it was five feet back, and then she moved up. So it moved up to her. So is this right? Yes. Okay, thank you. It's going to attack. Yeah, I think now Lear's getting the gist of if I try it right away, it's going for me. Yep. It's only going to be a 14 to hit. That doesn't hit. Thank nice. goodness. And because of five foot step, it can't go back invisible. Ha, take that spider. Ikmer's not in range to do his ready. Matumbe's not in range to do his ready. Matumbe, you're up. All right. Uh, Matumbe is going to take a five-foot step. It's going to be kind of going around Lyra and getting right up in this spider's business, and he's going to swing at it with that book. 17 off the die. I think that's going to hit. All right. Roll for damage. Roll for damage. Oh, minimum damage. Seven points of damage. Dead. Whoa! Damn Whoa! it! Whoa! Yes. Who splattered his ass? Yeah. Finish the combat. Finish your drinks. Because we'll see you next week. Woo! Wow.